Explicit dynamics allows us to capture the physics of short duration events. Consider a baseball hitting the bat, or your phone falling and hitting the floor, or a car crashing into a barrier. These events occur in milliseconds or even shorter time frames. But the objects involved in these examples experience very large transient dynamic forces. The nonlinearity of such simulations may be so high that it is impossible to achieve convergence by using implicit methods. In such extreme linear cases, explicit dynamics comes to our rescue. In this course, we'll discuss the theory behind explicit dynamic simulations. We'll begin by discussing the difference between an implicit method and an explicit method, and when to use either of these methods. When using explicit method, we need to perform a few checks to ensure that the solution obtained is reasonably accurate. For example, we need to ensure the energy balance in the system. We discuss what energy balance in an explicit dynamic simulation implies, the main causes of energy imbalance, and how to remedy energy imbalance. Since explicit dynamic simulations often model highly nonlinear events, certain types of mesh elements may show unwanted behaviors, such as hourglass behavior, shear locking, or volumetric locking. We discuss how to remedy these unwanted behaviors. A final point to keep in mind in case of explicit simulations would be the time step size. Unlike implicit methods, explicit methods are conditionally stable, meaning that they're stable only when the time step size is less than a certain limit. We discuss the factors which control this limit on the time step size and learn how to tweak the model to obtain an optimum time step size that allows us to obtain accurate solutions in an efficient manner.